guys. Hi. Hello, everyone, and um, happy Wednesday night. Welcome to Whimsical Wednesday. My name is Tracy Bellion, and I'm of Tracy's Fancy, and I'm here live on Dixie Bell's Facebook and Instagram's page. I've got two cameras going. I've got my husband, Matt. I almost called him Hat. My husband, Matt, behind the camera, ready to answer any questions that you might have. I am a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell, and we go live every single Wednesday night right here in my shop, um, whatever project I have going on, and share with you my process and teach you um, whatever I possibly can in about 30 to 40 minutes. And um, these are real live projects for real live customers. I don't make these up just to come on here and show you. These are actually things that people have asked me to do and I use 100% Dixie Bell products to take care of these projects for my clients. Um, I have lots and lots of repeat clients here in San Antonio, Texas and across the country, um, which is awesome because it means we are just sharing and spreading the um, love of Dixie Bell product and how um, easy it is to use and a really easy product that makes most of your projects just completely successful. So yes, Matt, did you have a question? I don't. Oh, I thought you pointed at something. <laughs> uh, we had a little glitch on the internet for a second, but it's fixed. We're good. Yeah, I think it's because they're close together. Oh, okay. Okay, guys. This is new. This is only the second time that I, on Whimsical Wednesday, have done both Facebook and Instagram. So, um, is it better? Yeah, that's good. We're good. We're okay. good to go. Um, thank you guys for being here. Uh, this is a really fun project. We are not working on a piece of furniture. Um, last week we wrapped up, uh, did we do the top surface of the dresser last week? Did we use the wood graining yeah. tool last week, you guys? I think we did. And that dresser is finished. If you follow me on my page, uh, you will have seen me post it. Instagram, I've posted it several times. On It's the red dresser with rose on the, rose on the front of it. And I've even shared a top a picture of the top surface, which is what we did here together. Last week on Whimsical Wednesday, we used Dixie Bell's wood graining tool, which is amazing. And I've had so many people tell me that they ordered the tool. And I've even had someone say that they had it and never used it. And they sent me photos of their project today. They used the exact same color paints that I used last week. And they said they posted their project and it sold in, I think they said one day, either an hour, it sold in an hour, or it sold in a day. I don't know, but um, I'm really, really happy for her. And it just, it's such an honor to get on here and be able to share with you um, my ideas and my visions and then watch you guys recreate them. I really, really like that. So um, please let us know where you're tuning in from, please. And uh, Dixie Bell is here behind the scenes and they will answer any questions that Matt may not relay to me. He is your mouth and uh, my eyes and ears. So I try to be, but sometimes the comments scroll through so fast I can't keep up. <laughs> Y'all, there to are wait a, for a, a pause in the talking. There room. are a lot of comments <laughs> and he says I talk too much. He says that. that <laughs> oh, here's your phone, babe. Ready? Catch. Uh, he says I talk too much and I make it difficult. Okay, so this <laughs> is, let's, let's get going here. This is a, obviously a carousel horse, but it's not really a carousel horse. It's a rocking pony. Um, it is an amazing piece that this is a client slash longtime friend. Uh, I went to high school with this girl and she lives in another city and she's had me do a couple of things for her and her husband bought her this horse for Christmas and um, it was solid white. Uh, and he said, I already know, but it's kind of dingy, kind of a shabby, dingy, yellowy, crackled up uh, white. And he said, I already know that you're going to have your friend paint this. So she was like, yes, I am. <laughs> and she sent it to me. I'm like, please let me paint that. So we're going to work on this together. <clears throat> we are doing the base coats of it tonight. And I'll probably come back on next week because I'm going to share with you what my design ideas are right now and what products we're going to use. Um, which includes some decoupage paper, which is new for the Bells and Whistles line that Dixie Bell has. Um, they don't just have paint. They don't just have paint brushes. By the way, I checked right before I went live, you guys, if y'all have not seen yet today, and if you've been waiting, my favorite brush is the flat medium. This is my favorite brush. I like it because the size is easy to hold in my hand. Um, it dips beautifully into the jars. This is a 16 ounce jar of paint, but if you're using an eight ounce jar of paint, 
this brush go, still goes right in. If you've got the wider brush with an eight ounce jar of paint, which is smaller, um, the bigger brushes don't fit and it, your bristles end up being pulled to the side like this. And um, this brush fits, but all the jars really well. So they're available right now. They've been super hard to come by. We've been out for like a year. Um, they just get them in small batches. And um, I found out about five o'clock today that they had some and I posted it on my page and um, people, are, are, people are ordering them and I don't know how many are left. So I put my link on the top of this video, Facebook, not Instagram, but Facebook, um, if you wanna click over and go see if you can grab yourself a brush. Um, the synthetic brushes, these brushes are amazing. They are made uh, by hand and uh, uh, made to carry the weight of a heavy chalk mineral paint. This is a chalk mineral paint, um, which has a lot of weight to it. And these are made to load really, really well, just as a water color brush is made to hold and load a lot of water. Um, these are made to hold and load a lot of chalk paint and I love them. Okay, so she brought me the horse and I don't know what it's made of, y'all. The base I think might be made of some sort of wood product, but it's not really a carved wood. I think it's probably some sort of casted plaster. It's, it's quite heavy. Um, I don't really know what it's made of, but it had a very shiny finish on it. Uh, it felt you know what it reminded me of? Yard art. It reminded me of something you would buy for your yard and then it would put out and it would weather the storm really well. Um, and it had a, a, a really uh, hard, shiny shell of a finish on it. So um, when in doubt, prep. Always, when in doubt, prep. Chalk mineral paint is beautiful because you don't have to. I could have just painted right over it, probably with the chalk paint, but I don't wanna put a lot of hand painted time into this piece. Uh, and not be sure that it's gonna stick and last for a long time. So I went ahead and prepped it and I chose to go with Slick Stick, not Boss. So Slick Stick is made for, uh, to help, uh, paint, help the paint adhere to things that are really slick. Hello, Slick Stick, stick on something slick, right? So it's made to help things adhere to things that are super shiny like glass, metal, formica, plastic, things like that. Because this was sort of, I could tell it was like some sort of man-made product. It wasn't porous at all. It was super slick. I went ahead and put a coat of slick stick on it just because it had such a shiny surface. I probably could have gotten away with just using Boss, but I didn't. Um, this made me feel a little bit better just because it was so shiny. Um, so I did use this. I did not need to use a coat of Boss. I don't think that I needed to be blocking any bleed through. I don't think that it's got any wood. So I used one coat of Slick Stick, which actually the jar calls for two, but I painted it really early this morning, probably about 12 hours ago, with a single coat of Slick Stick, and I've let it dry all day long. Um, okay, before I move into the paint part, how are we? Uh, good. You've got people signing in from all over the world. Yes. All the way from the UK. Hello, Canada, everybody in the whole world. Louisiana, which is a different world. Um, does anyone want to ask me anything about this horse? If you want to ask me where she got it from, I have no idea. I don't know. I have no idea, but I know that it's not gonna be white when we're finished with it. I'm gonna take my flip-flops off. Ah. Okay, so it's prepped and ready, right? Now you kind of need to know where you're going. I know that we tell you often, just paint, just paint. People say, I get stuck, I start, you know, I'm trying to plan and I don't know what to do. And, and you know, we're like, just paint. Just get a jar of paint and a brush and get out there and turn on some good music and just start painting um, and, and it, it'll come to you. It'll come to you. Well, there's a lot of truth in that, y'all. There really is. But I don't need to be, I'm not afraid to paint this. I, I don't have a fear of getting out here and painting, but I do kind of want to know where I'm going. I need to know at least like a color palette or am I going shabby chic? Am I going royal and regal? Am I going playful and whimsy? You know, what am I doing here? It helps to have something inspire you. Uh, just as when you're designing or decorating a room, it helps if you have a piece of art that you're gonna play off of or a really cool pillow that you're gonna play off of or a rug. Rugs in rooms work really well to play to decide what you're gonna play off of for the rest of the room design. It's kind of the same thing with painting piece furniture. Something needs to inspire you um, in some way. So, I was looking at the bottom of this. Do y'all see these planks on the bottom? Matt, would you give me that wood graining tool that I had handed you? I don't know where, oh, good. So I saw these planks down on the bottom and I was like, you know, I think I'm gonna make those planks have wood grain in them. 
can you get me the smaller one? So show, show me, babe. So this is the smaller wood grain tool here. Um, this is the larger one. It was wider than this plank that's down here. So I thought, well, I'll have Matt pop this off and put this smaller wood grain tool on there. And then I'm going to do wood grain across here so that each of these individualized planks will actually have a very real wood look to them, but we'll kind of do a play on color. Maybe we'll make them black and white. You know, I wasn't sure. And then all of a sudden, I remembered that I just got the new Dixie Belle uh, decoupage sheets. I was late. I was one of the, because I'm, I'm in Texas and we had snow all week last week. So our entire world shut down. Um, and so I didn't get the decoupage papers as fast as everyone else. Even the other brand, the other brand ambassador, Kristana got them before I did. So, um, I remember that I just got them and look at what one of the decoupage papers is. It's planks. It's wood planks already done in a decoupage sheet. Um, and if it was this wood grading tool that we used last week that made me think of it today, I'm like, wait, I have wood grain paper, paper, and they're almost identical to the size of the planks that are on the bottom here. So the, I have a bunch, I don't need that many, but this is what they look like. And if you want to, can you see them really well here, you guys? What I love about it is this looks like, this right here looks like the real wood. This here has the shabby chic type roses, like they've already been decoupaged on top of it. And then this right here has a really cool damask stencil over the plank, which I really, really like. And I also remembered when I saw this that I have the, the lace damask um, new transfer. So then the stars aligned and everything started making sense. And now I am inspired. So this is the direction we're going. Um, we're going, but, but I know she also loves color. So this is going to be only on the plank boards, but do you see up close all of the pinks and blues in the paper and greens, pinks, blues, and green soft and playful, um, on his saddle, his mane, his, his, uh, whatever you call these things. I don't know what you call those things. What do you call those things? Bit. Is that a bit? That is the bit. Is yeah. it a bit? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm feeling all horsified <laughs> right now. It's a bit. So um, a bit, um, and this part of the saddle right here. So we'll be pulling those colors off of this. And then on top of the saddle, I plan on using um, this lace transfer. This is one of the new transfers. And I don't know if y'all seen, you've probably already seen a brand ambassador that's used it. But this is what it looks like. And look how similar it is to this part of the wood plank right here. So this will be on, this right here will be on the saddle and this is underneath um, on the wood. So this will be on the saddle and this will be underneath on the wood. Great matchup, right? So it just happened really, I mean, seriously, Matt, how, like five minutes ten, before I went live, 10 yeah, minutes? Five, 10 minutes. Seriously, yeah, before I went live. He's like, what are you doing? I was like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And all of a sudden I was like, I know, I know what I'm doing. So that's the plan. So I decided, because now I have the plan, that um, the most fun part about it is the horse is gonna be a zebra. What? Yes, the horse is gonna be a zebra. So I already have slick stick on. I'm using fluff and my flat medium brush, and I've already painted a coat of fluff right here, and so I'm gonna scoot him over a little bit and start putting some fluff. When you use the chalk mineral paint, have a little bottle of spritzer. The paint's very, very thick, as you can see. See this? It's nice and thick, nice and thick. And you can make it thicker. You can leave your jar off and make it even thicker if you want it. You can thin it out if you want to. You can add water to your jar. I don't recommend that. I recommend using water on your surface or on your brush. Just spray your brush or spray your surface. Wet your paint down a little bit and it moves really, really easily for you. So I know that you can't see that I'm painting this because it already had slick stick. Um, but right now I'm giving it a good coat of fluff which is the actual chalk mineral paint. So it kind of serves as its second coat, basically, um, but I've got to get it ready to turn it into a zebra. And I am going to go with black and white. I know that my client loves black and white as much as I do. She's my friend as well. I don't know if she's watching. Her name is Lonnie. She has no idea that I've started her horse tonight, um, her horse that's going to be a zebra. So I'm gonna just do this one side with you guys right here. Uh, I love zebra pattern. I've done zebra dressers. Uh, I've got furniture in my house that has zebra pattern on it. I've used zebra decoupage. I've used zebra foils, uh, but I've mostly done a lot of hand painting zebra.
Are those transfers in the gray family or brown? You know, oh, this, the, you mean this, the decoupage well, paper. They didn't, they didn't say which one. Okay, so the decoupage papers are, it's more brown. So this is a little, I know it's really weird with uh, camera digital devices. It makes everything look a little bit different. Uh, but this is definitely brown. It's like a brownish gray. It does have a gray tone to it. It doesn't have an orangey brown or a reddy brown. It's very much a gray brown. Very weathered, like barnwood. It's kind of like a barnwood brown. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is kind of an off-white with a little bit of white in there. And then this has the brown with the white stencil over the top of it. And then the roses that pull in. Little beige and pinks and greens and blues. Uh, Elizabeth wants to know why not cotton instead of fluff. Because I don't care for cotton. <laughs> <laughs> I love Dixie Belle paint. But, you know, we've all got our favorite colors, right? And we've all got our colors that we really don't like that much. And uh, cotton is just not my favorite. It's a very hard white. It's like, it's a pure, 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 I call it a clinical white. That's what I call it, a clinical white. It's clinical, like hospital white. Um, fluff is softer and just like it sounds. It's fluff. It's like marshmallow white it's got a gray undertone to it you can't see the gray but it's just a softer gray and i just love it and i use y'all my people my tracy fancy people you know i always use uh fluff and caviar cotton has its time and place it's not that i don't ever use it i do i do use it sometimes i'll put fluff on a project next to another color and i'm like ah oh, that's not working um or next to a you know a transfer or something and then I'll have to use uh, caviar, I mean, uh, cotton instead. Okay, so now, pencil, I need a pencil. Um, and then I had Matt pull up on his computer uh, a picture, a picture of a little zebra. It's just a zebra clip art. Um, it's a profile of a zebra. Can y'all see that pretty well? We just, sent, we just Googled, um, I Googled zebra profile clip art. That's what I Googled. Cause I, didn't, I just wanted clip art. I didn't want like a bunch of real zebras tromping through the, you know, the rivers and stuff. Um, I just wanted a fake clip art just to get an idea of the, the direction that the stripes should go. Um, so let me move all of that. The good thing about uh, Dixie Belle paint is it dries so quickly that you can move right along with your project. So I painted this up here uh, while um, he was getting the video ready and it's already dry um, up here. But if I wanted to dry a little bit more, you can use your heat gun, but usually the paint's dry in about 20 minutes. Um, otherwise, you can use a heat gun to dry it. Blow dryer works as well. Uh, heat gun adds uh, a lot of heat, dries really quickly. You just wanna make sure that you keep your heat gun moving and don't hold it in place. And it just sucks the moisture, especially if you live, heat guns are really good if you live in a really high humidity area. Um, this will help help dry your project, move your projects along a little faster if you're impatient like me and you get out here and you don't want to wait. No one likes to watch paint dry, right? What um, kind of paper is that? What kind of transfer paper is that? Uh, it's the new Bells and Whistles Dixie Bell transfer paper and um, or the decoupage, not sorry, not de transfer, decoupage paper and it will be available. It's not available yet. It'll be available. We're thinking mid-spring is what we're thinking. Um, and this one, but we've been showcasing them. So we're already showcasing the transfers and the decoupage papers will be available in the spring, early to mid spring. We're thinking we don't have an exact date yet, um, but these are exactly them. This is what they look like. And this one is called palette wood pattern, palette wood pattern. So perfect for my horse, you know? All right. So looking at my zebra, um, I'm gonna start up on his neck, and I'm just gonna kinda, you can be very free with zebra, you guys. There's no right or wrong. You really can't mess it up. I just thought if I got out here and just started drawing, that y'all would be like, oh, I can never do that. I can't draw a zebra. Yeah, you can. Just pull it up on the internet and copy it like a, like a little kid. You can do it. Sue says the zebra is used as a symbol for the type of cancer she has. <gasps> yes, yes. We did, weren't we gonna do a chair for you? We were gonna do a chair for you. That's right, the zebra giraffe chair. That's you, right? Um, 
Sue, hi, good to see you. We talked about that and I had never, I did not know that. And wasn't it just not a zebra, but wasn't it like a pink zebra? Didn't have something to do with like a pink zebra? You do like zebras. Um, okay, so I'm going to start from the middle of his neck and just bring my pencil up just very lightly, just like this. I'm gonna go ahead and do like one of those Y things like that and make like the little, you know, where it makes like a V and comes back out. See, nice and simple. And we're gonna fill all that in with black. And one of the ways, it's kind of funny because you'll draw it out when you're doing zebra and you'll forget, is that supposed to be black or white? Wait, is that the black part or the white part? Um, so what I'll do sometimes is I'll just kind of fill it in like that, like that's my black part. I'm gonna go over that with black paint, that's black. All right, um, so let's do another little section up here. Go, put a little squiggle in it, that's black. All right, and we'll do, oh, I just made a big mark there. So let's do another one going down like that. We'll just do a big one, come back, squiggle that, and we'll do another one from in here. I kind of like to fill it in, not leave too much white space. So there we go, like that. And how does it go from their center chest over and up. Can y'all hear me okay? I know I'm backwards here. Like that. Do you have any concerns about the paint covering the pencil marks? Uh, my paint will go right to my pencil mark. My paint will go right up to the pencil mark. Pencil mark will be under my paint. <clears throat> that one's a little jiggy. A little bit, get a little jiggy. Okay, so now I'm going to come down from lower Bring it up and then that kind of we do that. Okay, let me move the camera so that Let's see what we're doing. Sorry guys. Yeah, I'm gonna move that camera my so four I can turn here. Too with lighting. And this I did notice when I was looking at the zebras that they do go from their upper body to their leg, and their legs have more just like rings almost, almost rings that go just like this around them. So I'm gonna squiggle that in. Thank you, Art. What do you say? Oh, he was just kinda trying to clear the room for us on Instagram. Oh, okay. All right. Just kinda come in. Okay, we're back. All right, we're back. Sorry guys, we had a glitch. So sorry, I'm just, I just keep on painting. I'll just keep on painting. All right, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna start bringing this up from the belly, up like this, from underneath, and that one's gonna be black. And then I think I'll bring one in like this, and then we'll break out the paint. Now I'm only going to the center of the chest here, but when, the, when I turn the zebra around, or when I turn the horse around towards me, I'll take this same pattern across on the other side. So you can see that my marks kind of stop middle of the chest. And if you know the zebras, you, when you look at them, everything kind of on their breast goes down into a, uh, into a V. All right, so I'm gonna stop right there and um, just tackle this part. So I have a whole, whole load of little brushes right here. So I'm gonna pull out an angled brush. Angle brushes work really, really well when you're working on small areas like this. And I'm gonna use my favorite black, which is caviar. And where is my caviar? Right here. My favorite black. And my jar has been open, because I use it all the time and I leave it open in my workshop. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray a little bit in my lid, a little bit of my water in my lid. I'm gonna use my lid as my palette. And then I'm just gonna pour a little bit into my palette, I mean into my uh, lid here. And then I'm gonna stir it up. I'm gonna use a bigger brush to stir this up. Just kind of stir some of my water into that just to thin it out. It's easier to paint with a little bit thinner paint than it is with like real thick, goopy paint. You don't have as much control when it's just, you know, when it's too thick. Is that a, what's your base coat? Is that just a, a primer? It's a coat, it? it's one coat actually of stick flick, stick flick. It's one coat of slick stick and one coat of fluff, one coat of fluff. fluff. All right, so here we go. Um, Matt doesn't really need to come in. I just want y'all to know that I'm now starting, I'm using a 
a black angled brush, just a, a small angled brush like this. Here's one and here's a smaller one. You can see the, the brushes just like that. Bigger one, smaller one. I'm starting with this larger one, but I actually may need to switch over to the bigger one. Guys, how's the video quality on Facebook on the Dixie Bell page? <clears throat> So you don't have to be like super specific with uh, with the edges. You can just, if, what you've done is sort of color blocked where you want your stripes to be and you can do whatever you want with it. There really is no right or wrong. It's actually a very free animal print to, to paint. Hey but, Barb and Nino, um, see if you can't get out and then get back in and see if that improves the uh, the video at all. We're getting mixed. Some people have a good signal and some people it's a little uh, bad video quality. Yeah. You want to tell them we got a new modem and we were hoping that fixed the situation? Uh, I'm not sure that's what it is. I think it's because we're doing two broadcasts next to each other. Okay. But anyway, we got a new modem during the storm and uh, it's not AT&T, it's Best Buy. So. So what does that matter? <laughs> well, I don't know. AT&T said you can't use anybody else's, but then when I talked to my tech guy, he said you can use whatever you want. Just uh, once you punch in the code, it should work, and it did. Okay, y'all see how free I'm being with this? So I also paint a lot of leopard print, and leopard print is fun, but it's harder. It's harder than zebra. Zebra is a lot easier. Uh, zebra is quite realistic looking no, no matter what. And leopard either looks comical or good, you know, one or the other. So uh, my leopard usually looks comical. I don't usually try to make my leopard look real. I try to make my leopard look obviously like fun, funky, jumbo, oversized leopard print. But man, some people are really good at painting leopard. I'm really, really good. Some people, it just looks completely real. See, he's so cute already. So who's painted zebra on here, you guys? Y'all are so quiet. Anybody saying anything, babe? We got our uh, there, there's not really any questions. Just uh, everybody loves the horse and yeah, thinks that the that. zebra stripes are looking good. I need to know, I need to know when you I know, I just, it's hard to interrupt you. Okay, I'm, I'm done talking, go I, ahead. I don't want to be rude. I'm done talking, be rude, go okay. ahead. <laughs> All right, well now I'm reading uh, comments about the video quality, so I will go back. Aww. What was the base coat? You already answered that. Issues. They don't want to hear me scrolling. Lonnie says, that's very true, Cynthia gave you a compliment. She says you're the best at what you do. Aw, who said that? And Lani, Lani said, anything Tracy does is so gorgeous. Is it Lani? It the, is. Ellie and I? Yes, Pruitt. Yes, this is her horse. Oh. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> this is her horse, you guys. This is Lani's horse. What do you think, Lani? I told you, you had a feeling it was going to be a zebra, right? You're okay with that. I sent her a, I think I sent her a message a while back and said, would you be okay if your zebra became a horse? She was like, whatever you want. Yeah, it looks good. It is looking good, right? Thank you. So I hope that this will inspire you guys to give this a try. Do something that's big, something, you know, do, do something that you, like I we talked about yard art. Choose yard art. Do something that's been in your yard, that's been weathered. Bring it in, give it a good coat of primer, uh, clean it up, put a fresh coat of paint on it, and uh, try, try to do a zebra print. Three Kitty says you have some amazing clients. I I do. You Isn't do. that awesome? You that is true because client, I couldn't but... showcase I couldn't showcase any of this stuff if I didn't have trusting clients, brave clients, um, color loving clients for sure. I really do. I get told that a lot because I you know I talk to a lot of retailers, I talk to a lot of other business owners and artists, and and they're like, how do you 
Where do you find them? All of my clients want white and gray. Um, Francis says you always do awesome freehand artwork. Oh, thank you, Francis. I love it. And that you, uh, Julie says you have a lovely assistant. Thank you, Julie. I do have a lovely assistant. You do. Thank you, honey, for being my lovely assistant. <laughs> Even though you were a little grumpy before the camera came on. Mm. Mm. Huh. You can tell him. Well, I have a very nice wood inlaid desk in Tracy's office and the finish got ruined today. It wasn't today, it was yesterday. Well, I noticed it today. Can't get, can't keep anything nice. <laughs> Not when kids are around. <laughs> I had a feeling that's what it was. Yeah. Yep. Okay, see, I get quiet, y'all, when I stop, when I start doing detail work. I get really quiet. Lonnie says she's in love with anything you do is perfectly fine with her and that you do your thing. A sweetheart. Amber follows all your videos. Who is that? Amber who? Say their names. Let's so. see. Amber Demakowitz. Hello. Am I Amber. pronouncing pronouncing that right? I think that sounded really good. If that wasn't Thank you, right, I, I like how you said it. Demakowitz. 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 I was so happy when I married Matt because my last name became Bellion, and I thought that was so fancy. Very fancy. Very fancy. Because before <laughs> that, I was Johnson, and that was just so basic. You know, it was very, I mean, it was fine, but it was super basic, Johnson. And I was like, Bellion. Bellion. Very fancy. I wouldn't really grumpy, Cynthia. If I fur my eyebrows, then she thinks I'm grumpy. Oh, he, they were like this. Uh, very rarely do I get, they were like that. That's how he looked. Do I get soured? Soured. <laughs> soured. What time is it? How are we doing on time? We're pretty good. We're doing um, good. We're good. Yeah, we got about nine minutes. I'm gonna try to get this leg done, and we'll be we'll be done. Who's gonna try left? Who's gonna try zebra? But do you need to put two coats on the stripes? Uh, it depends. It depends. I really it just it just depends on how I feel about the overall look. I probably won't until I do the whole project, and then once the whole thing is done, I'll go. Sometimes when they're a little more sheer it, it, it seems like it's a little softer um, but in the end if I feel like it's distracting then and I want it to be more sharp and, and clear uh, the edge is more clear I'll go back and do a second coat but I probably will wait till the whole project's done Bella wants to know if you're gonna post this when it's finished oh of course that must be an Instagram question was it yes and yes. Uh, what kind of finish do you use for this uh, when I'm done, when I'm finished with this, this will get coats of gator hide. I will use gator hide on top of that. It's Dixie Belle's most hardy top coat, and I always post my finished projects. Um, they will post on Dixie Belle's pages eventually, but they take a while. Um, so usually within a week of starting, I'm usually done. However, I think we may finish this together next week, and then I'll post right after that um, on my page. So please make sure that you guys are giving me a follow on my page. Uh, Tracy's Fancy, both Instagram and Facebook. Art Lounge Bambi wants to uh, wants to know if you're giving it a name. Okay, do you see how I messed up right there, guys? See that little tiny boo-boo? I got a boo-boo. Not a big deal, right? I just make my stripe fatter right there. It's not a big deal. I'm like, oops! I just come back with my brush and make my stripe a little bit fatter. Actually, a lot fatter. <laughs> There's a curve right there that my brush... And plus, when I paint with you guys online... Uh, I have to say it kind of a funky angle, so I don't really have as much control over my brush as I normally would. Uh, what was the question? Am I what? I forgot what the last question was. Um, it was, do you feel lucky to have such a, a man like myself in the house? That was not <laughs> a question. <laughs> no, it was a name. So they we didn't know if I was going to name the horse. Yes. Art wanted to know that. Oh, Art, that's such a good question. But I think, Lonnie, I don't think, Lonnie, you don't want me naming your horse, do you? It's your horse. Name that horse Zebra. Uh, did, who saw my chair that Sue was talking about earlier? The z, the giraffe chair that became, a, that dressed up like a zebra for the day. Um, super cute. One of my one of my uh, Facebook family following friends 
Cindy Youngblood, I believe it was her last name, bought that chair from me. I loved it. It was a giant zebra that was really a giraffe with flowers on her head. Did y'all see that? It's on my Instagram feed, feed, Instagram feed if you go back and look for it. Uh, um, can you go over... Uh, go ahead. Associate wants to know what kind of brushes you're using. Are you talking about the little brushes? Okay, so the little brushes, I just have a ton of just artistic brushes. I buy them at, at Hobby Lobby, Walmart, just a bunch of different brushes. Thank you, Karen. But I was using um, an angled brush. Like that, an angled brush. That's what I was using for that. So cute so far, right? It's gonna be a zebra in a heartbeat. We're good on weather now, Susan. Everything's thawed out. Yeah. Uh, Michelle wants to know, can you say again what you're doing to those bottom slats? The bottom slats um, were my inspiration. Uh, I was going to use the wood grain tool like we used last week and make wood grain on them and do them in like fun colors. But then I remembered that I had the new decoupage paper from Dixie Belle and one of them is called Palette Wood Pattern and it looks like this. And so it's plank wood, brown, tiny rosebuds, stenciled wood, looks worn and aged. I love it so much. Um, and so I'm going to lay these down across the bottom like that, going this way. And then I'll have the black and white zebra. I probably will black and white stripe the edge of this down here on the very, can y'all see this bottom edge? Probably I'm going to do a vertical, big, wide black and white stripe down here as well. So it's not just black and white up here. I got some black and white down here. Um, and then I'm going to pull from the rosebuds and do fun colors on the saddle um, and on the bit and her mane and her tail her hooves will probably make her hooves a pretty color so uh so it was one of york that saw the chair wanna saw it yeah she saw it i'm not surprised one is so supportive i love you wanna thank you for always being so supportive of my work um so that's it you guys i think that's it uh that we will go, that's as far as we'll go tonight, but I hope that you can see, I really want to encourage you, it's it's close to springtime. My point for doing this tonight was to show you that you can paint anything with Dixie Bell chalk paint, absolutely anything. And it's the time of year to pull those things in from outside that have looked worn out. They lasted all last summer and they went through this winter and you wanna freshen them up for the spring, the coming spring and the summer and bring them in, clean them up. You can put a coat of slick stick or a coat of boss down and turn anything into a zebra that's in your yard. <laughs> um, thank you, Instagram, for having us again tonight. Thank you, Dixie Bell. Thank you guys for being here tonight, joining Matt and I. We appreciate it. And Dixie Bell, thank you for having us. I hope you guys will give us a follow over on Tracy's Fancy, and we will see you around soon. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.